Welcome to Rochdale Valley, one of the wildest pockets of Greater Manchester, tucked away behind an unassuming housing estate in Rochdale. Greater Manchester is indeed a patch of paradise for foragers, who look for fresh mushrooms and vegetables. Meet David Winard, arguably the savviest urban harvester in the conurbation. David works as an urban wildlife guide, helping groups and individuals explore wild edible plants in the forests, parks and even car parks of Greater Manchester. So this is Greiselhurst Woods in Rochdale and it's a beautiful kind of uh, ancient woodland valley and it's filled with all sorts of wildlife. Absolutely fantastic for foraging, filled with all sorts of edible plants. Uh, plants like this, this is large bittercress. Large bittercress has a really kind of strong rockety kind of horse radishy flavour. You can eat the leaves, you can eat the flowers, it's fantastic. But everywhere you look around here there's going to be plants that we can utilise in some way. So foraging is all about being safe and only picking what you know. And in Greater Manchester alone there's at least 200 plants you could use. Um, but some of the more kind of easily, you know, identifiable ones are things like this. Stinging nettle. Everyone knows nettle. But it's absolutely full of goodness, fantastic to eat, really spinachy um, and abundant. Uh, and what you're after eating is kind of that. That's perfect. You can, you know, pick lots and lots of nettles like this, um, put them in soups, make a pesto. It's absolutely fantastic. And if you pick them like that, it'll constantly produce regrowth. So you can constantly harvest nettles right the way through the season. So this is jelly ear. And jelly ear is a fungus that most people, although will think is disgusting to look at, will have eaten. And jelly ear, you're getting things like hot and sour soup in Chinese restaurants. Uh, you can buy it from the supermarkets, they call it wood ear, and you can pay it at a fortune for it for just a small amount. Or you can come out into the wild and collect your own. So as I said before, that Manchester is covered in all sorts of edible plants to use. Um, it's all about knowing what to pick and what not to pick. So we need to be able to confidently identify what we're going to pick to eat. Because there are things in Manchester like hemlock, hemlock water, drop water and deadly nightshade which will kill you. But things like this are so iconic and easy to identify that you can't go wrong. This is ramsons or wild garlic. And at this time of year it's starting to go past its best. But if you can find your own patch now, then next spring you can pick lots of it. All parts of this plant are edible. The leaves especially taste just like spring onions and with a hint of garlic. And when you dry them, they're really, really garlicky. Uh, you can eat the stem, you can eat the flowers whole. Just literally get a flower like that. Mm. And it's like eating a whole bunch of spring onion in one go. It's really, really strong, but beautiful flavor. So we've been at one place which is kind of very wild and full of all sorts of kind of traditional plants you expect to see in woodlands but the great thing with Greater Manchester is is that there's loads of kind of urban areas where you find plants that are just kind of a bit of a surprise you're not going to find them in the countryside these are the kind of places you're going to find them in the kind of concrete jungle and this is one of my favorites it's grown everywhere across Greater Manchester from council car parks supermarket car parks kind of hedgerows and gardens and things like that and this is Japanese rose Rosa rugosa and it smells absolutely beautiful it's just like, it, you get your nose in, it's just like Turkish delight straight away. And you can do all sorts with this. One of the, my favourite things to do, and my friends constantly say I drink too much uh, forage liqueurs, is make a Japanese rose petal uh, liqueur. And all you do is you take some of, the, some of the petals away, you put them in a jar filled with vodka, add some sugar, oh, it's absolutely delicious. Within 24 hours you get this heavenly Turkish delight liqueur that runs beautifully pink, uh, and it's absolutely delicious. And you're making it, straight from an urban area in Greater Manchester. This is Japanese knotweed, and Japanese knotweed is a very interesting plant botanically. Uh, it costs the country £165 million a year trying to control it. It's one of the most invasive species we have in the country. Um, it grows incredibly quickly, um, starts off in kind of April, like looking like pink asparagus shoots, and quickly grows rather tall, and it will still get much taller than this, can grow to two or three metres high. Um, it can grow through concrete. If you get it in your garden, it's an absolute nightmare to get rid of. Um, it just takes over a whole area. But it has the one thing that the forager loves is that it's beautiful to eat. When you, at this stage, it's a little bit too tough, 
but kind of back in April uh, and early May, when it looks like pink asparagus, it tastes exactly like rhubarb, and you can replace any recipe that has rhubarb with Japanese knotweed. And there's even restaurants down in London doing Japanese knotweed and custard, selling it for 10 pounds a go, and yet it grows as a weed everywhere in Greater Manchester. We're desperate to try and get rid of it, so we can eat our way through this plant. And it, give it an inch and it takes a mile. You can literally see it growing out of the cracks in walls and things like that. It's absolutely everywhere, but tastes delicious. So this is mugwort, and mugwort is a fantastic aromatic plant. It has a really, really, really nice aromatic uh, smell to it. Um, but it's a really good plant to use for a tea. You can dry it and make a herbal tea with it. And it activates part of the brain that makes you remember dreams. So not only does it make a lovely tea, but it gives you a really, you know, strange waking up in the morning, that's for sure. We're in an urban park in the middle of Rochdale now, and even here, with literally the town hall behind us, we've got a dual carriageway here, you know, really, really in the heart of a kind of urban jungle, there's still plenty to forage and get our hands on and make things with. I mean, even just using edible flowers as a garnish, this is oxide daisy, um, you can eat these whole, literally have this wonderful kind of lettucey flavour, and um, make wonderful garnishes for salads and things like that, so we can use that. We've got other plants as well. This is meadow sweet. Meadow sweet is a wonderful plant, it comes from the old English for mead sweet, it was used for sweetening mead. Um, and it's the plant that aspirin was first isolated from. Um, most people think it's willow, but it was actually meadow sweet. So if you make uh, a, a syrup from the actual flowers, like an, alder, like an elderflower syrup, um, but using the meadow sweet instead of the elderflower, um, you can help thin the blood, you know, it, it helps relieve kind of blood pressure, um, just kind of it's a really really useful tonic as well it contains all the goodness that aspirin does obviously if you're on any medication that conflicts with aspirin then don't use meadow sweet um, so it is a wonderful plant and there's other plants as well remember at the said side of a pond uh, just down here this is water mint and water mint as you can tell by its name has this really wonderful pungent flavor and smell uh, really really strong mint uh, and it makes a wonderful kind of water mint sorbet. Really, really fantastic. And the interesting thing with that is you, when you make it, it will either turn pink or green. No rhyme or reason. You get this wonderful flavored water mint sorbet, either pink or green, and you know, nature dictates it from what the chemicals are in the leaves. It's absolutely wonderful. So even here, there's lots of things to, to pick. Foraging itself is becoming more and more popular. You know, TV shows are promoting it. Um, people want to know where their food comes from. They want, to, they want unique flavors that you can't buy in the supermarket. You know, you can't buy wild garlic in the supermarket. You've got to go out and pick it yourself and use it. And then you can make all sorts of wonderful things with it. So people are starting to become more and more interested in, in what grows on their doorstep, what they can get, all these different flavors, all these different recipes they can create using these things. The benefit of well is that, you know, you're getting healthy by going out, going for a walk, picking the plants. The plants themselves are very healthy and good to eat. Um, as well as them having an impact on, on your food bill. You know, going out and picking lots of spring greens reduces your food bill drastically. And people are getting more and more interested in that when, you know, coming out of the financial recovery and things like that. So foraging is becoming more and more popular. Summer's a great time to get into kind of foraging because all the flowers are starting to come out. They're all in flower and you can use some of those flowers for making all sorts of, of all sorts of things from teas to syrups and, and jams and things. Things like the Japanese rose that we saw before but lots of other plants as well. And if we get a wet summer then the mushrooms come out much earlier as well. So you get this really long period of where the mushrooms are out. Rather than just being a couple of months in the autumn you can start finding things like porcini. You know things that people think this Italian wonderful mushroom that you pay a fortune for in supermarkets is a really common mushroom in Manchester. Um, it grows in a variety of places from urban parks like this to the, to the, to the wild woods if you like uh, and you can get your hands on it in, you know, in some years as early as June or July right the way through to November. Um, so it's just a great time because you start getting the berries will be coming out you know as we get into kind of July and August as well. Um, so there's just a lots to get on with, lots of jams to make, lots of syrups to make, uh, lot, just you're just constantly out picking stuff, making it, giving it to friends, trying it, it's just it's a great time of year. Whether in the concrete jungle or in the lush forest, nature gives you the freshest food possible. And it gives it for free. Adam Farkash, that's Manchester.